I've got to assume that Kai Havertz is some sort of tax write-off. Pogba, Paul Pogba. He had the equipment to be the best midfield player in the world. The worst thing that happened to him, winning a World Cup, where he could turn and say, I'm a World Cup winner. I think at that point, it was him going backwards. In my view, I think he's the best manager around. Um, so it flies in the face. Better than Pep? I, I do for different reasons. Jack Grealish. Mm. No, I can't say I'm his biggest fan, no. I like working with Roy, Jimmy. What's his name, Man United player? <laughs> Gary Neville. He was like the gift it kept giving. One of the major components of, or one of the major protagonists or perpetuators of mental resilience was Alex Ferguson and his tenure at Man United. I mean, I only met him a couple of times um, and he drank all my scotch in my boardroom, which I didn't appreciate. Um, That's because you had red no, wine in there, obviously. No, no, you wouldn't have been invited into the boardroom. What? And the first time I ever met you was in the Blackburn boardroom, actually. Um, first game, Palace. Your manager had a white suit on. Probably. He was like the man from Del Monte, wasn't he? Yeah. Good lad. What was his name? Alan Smith. Alan. Yeah, Alan. He, was, uh, he was what he was, yeah. yeah. And not, not a good man in my view, but my experiences of him. But I just remember the first time that you and I met and you said to me, welcome to the Madhouse. That was your opening game. Was I like, wrong? No, because I remember saying, if it's a madhouse, I'll f it straight in and I'll be all right here. But what do you reckon on Arteta? Because I think it's evident that they needed to buy a goal scorer. They needed to buy a centre forward in the summer. I cannot, I, I, I've got to assume that Kai Havertz is some sort of tax write off because I can't think of any, I can't have any <coughs> thinking about that. Do, do you think Arteta should be in for some criticism? He's had 250 million quid to spend and he spent it and they still have the same problem or a a, a derivative of it in the fact that they don't have a central focus for someone that can score 25 goals a season. See, I like the... I'll, I'll, I'll get to your your question. Is it Smith Rowe? Smith Rowe? Yeah, Emil Smith Rowe. I, yeah. I like him. Why? It's a midfield player running into the box, clever passes. Everything seems to be done when he's sprinting, which I like. Goal threat. And then you spend 60 million on Arteta to be... On um, so habits. Point, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, so the point I want to make is that six million, that would be a criticism, a fair criticism, I think. Yeah. You've spent, when you, you know what about building a football team is you, 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 you strengthen, you try and you get, get your weakest, get yeah, you get your midfielder. weakest, yeah. you look to strengthen your weakest part of your team. Yeah. Well, it was, I think it was screaming out for most people, Arsenal needed another striker with Jesus. So you go and, you go and take uh, um, Kai Abbott's from, from Chelsea for yeah. big money. When really, you've got a homegrown player who I think is every bit as good as him. So that 60 million should have been maybe directed towards a striker, yeah. But does that, can you And see, that, can, that might can, cost them. Last year, when yeah. they were far ahead, a, a different type of striker. You know, I'm talking about Tony, who's, when you're buying players, you're trying to eliminate the, what's the problem with them? What, why would they not be successful here? So if they're a foreigner, will they deal with dif different culture? Will they family deal with that? Will he pick up the language quick enough? Will he be able to deal with the intensity of the English game? So you try and take out one of them. So with Jesus, from do you, City, so do you think? Do you think? Do you think? I I've got mixed emotions about Arteta. I I, I love the fact that he frustrates you, doesn't he? A little bit, yeah, because I think there's a lot of noise, and sometimes I think that the substance isn't quite there. And I thought that before, and yet he produced a side last year that was really worth applauding and, 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 and had real merit attached to it. And he's been given a lot of support. I mean, I, I can't make head nor tail of debates about goalkeepers being rotated and the Havertz situation. And I don't like, and I've said it repeatedly, I don't like some of the nonsense that he's come out with about referees and the manner in which his club has supported him. But I, I don't know if Arsenal will keep on spending the way that they are with him because they've spent like drunken sailors. Ever since the European Super League, it would appear that Cronkies woke up suddenly realise this isn't an arm's length subsidiary of an American business. Quite fancy is the idea that there might be some value in it because he's seen Chelsea get bought for two and a half billion quid and he's starting to make some money available. And I don't think you can go on spending 250 to 200, 200 million to 250 million every season and have won one FA Cup in three and a half years. A well-trodden path for you, but notwithstanding it, it's something that a lot of people have heard you talk about and, and wonder why you talk about it with such vigour and Vitrol, Pogba, Paul Pogba. He was your poster boy for at times things that were it definitely was a gift not wrong. That kept on giving. In what way? Why I was critical of him, 
he had the equipment to be the best midfield player in the world. And I saw a young man who was going through emotions a lot of the time, and that frustrated me. With that physique, with the technical ability, he just didn't have the right attitude to the game to make him become a superstar. The, the worst thing that happened to him, winning a World Cup, where he could turn and say, I'm a World Cup winner. I think at that point, it was him going backwards. But, I mean, when you talk about the equipment, I mean, you having played at the very top of the game, and I would argue, not just because you're sat here and I'm blowing smoke up your ass, I would say that you're one of the greatest midfielders that these Isles have produced, and you can Thank play you. in any generation, and God knows what you'd have gotten in this day and age. Um, you'd have been able to adapt, even though it was a very physical game and you were very physical in it. Easily. Hit. Yeah, because you could play as well. But isn't wasn't part of the makeup? You talk about all the attributes. Isn't part of the the makeup of, or, or big component part of the attributes? What's going on here? Oh, enormous. And, and and you've only described the physical attributes. Well, but, well, but did I not say that he just didn't work hard enough? Which obviously comes from your mental state as well. But doesn't it come and from also, the people that you're working for? Isn't that something? Isn't that something that the manager would tolerate? Something that the manager would allow? That Pogba was in Man United. Who was his manager most of the time? Was it Solskjaer? Well, Mourinho had him. Mourinho called him a very he derogative did, he? term. He did, didn't he? Well, I don't know what he called him, but you, you, uh, I, remember some... see, I remember seeing that training ground instance when mm. Pogba comes on the pitch and Mourinho and Pogba are having did a standoff. Did he call him a virus or something? It was something. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty strong stuff. Depends if so, he's right or if he's so, wrong. So I just, no, from... What I've seen, what I saw, um, someone who'd stop listening. Someone who would just, as I said, I'm a World Cup winner, what can you tell me? And I think the truly great players turn up every day and try and learn something what new. What can you do? Every day. So I, I was going at it from, you're a real player. Please show me you're a real player. And I, and I think you just tossed it off. That's a nice choice of words. Um, is, is that something that can be affected when you've got a pl when you've got players now, Graham, you were when you were playing, you were well remunerated, right? Well remunerated. I think you were one of the highest paid players, players, right? But the quantums of cash are so significant now. You get paid off money, and you can tell people it to off. Once they're in that space and they believe their own hype, which is part and parcel of what you're potentially suggesting with Pogba, can you get them back? I think you need um, the right characters at your football club, the right manager, the right manager. Around him, I, I um, I've said this to Mourinho. I said, "Do you wish you had kept Ibrahimovic?" And he he looked at me and he said, "Why do you say that?" I said, "Because he was your main man that kept them all in tow." So Did he? he? Like, yeah. Did he? Mm. I can remember watching a video because I was working at Sky at the well, time. Because he was bigger, character-wise, a bit like but a strong, strong yeah. person. Yeah, strong personality. And he was doing a, an interview <coughs> for Sky Ibrahimovic. And, you know, he's, he's extremely confident. He's got presence, big, big guy. And then Pogba came into the, and was making. Remember it. Remember and, it. And he, he yeah. dismissed After him. After the League Cup on it. He dismissed yeah. him like a little boy, and Pogba yeah. left the room with his tail between his legs. And I thought, he's, he's your man in the dressing room. That's what you need in the dressing room. You know, someone that will point a finger and be big enough to, to, to put the would-be superstars in their place. Wayne Rooney, obviously he comes, well, first of all, what do you think of him? Ad infinitum. World-class player. player. Yeah. My definition, I think you know, of a world-class player is someone who could leave that club and go and get in anyone else's team. And there's very few players can do that. I think he could have done for a good five, six years of his career. But top, what he, top player, but, but, warrior, great technician. Um, and I'll say this, Athlete, athlete. I, I'm, yeah, real deal. Do you think he got? Do you think he did it as? When well, I know this is, sounds like a ridiculous sort of <laughs> scary question, given the fact he's Man United's record goal scorer, and, and was England's, and in, was England's. But do you think? Because there's a part of me that thinks he didn't, and that, it's because he went early and pretty much finished earlier than I would have anticipated, and the physicality surrounding him. Do you think he? Do you think he hit the heights that he could have hit? As a player, well, his records, his goalscoring records would suggest that, and trophies he won. I, I, um, you know, I'm, I don't know if there's stories about him in 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 um, 
maybe not looking after himself as well as he should have done. But I think for the vast majority of his his peak years, it, it didn't have any impact on him. But he's gone. He went to America. When he went to America, when he's thirty, I mean, what's he now? Thirty six, thirty seven, thirty six, thirty six. So he's been in management for two two and a half years, mm -hmm. and before that, he was in America for two years. So we're talking about a Man United player going to America at 31, 32 years of age. That's why I make well, the observation. Well, he still has some life in him, because as far as I know, he didn't get any sort of knocks. I think he was fine in that respect. His choice, his choice. Maybe, um, I cannot speak for him. Maybe he was at Man United for over a decade, wasn't he? And maybe I thought, this is it. I'm ready for something completely Longer different. Longer than that, I think, wasn't it? Completely, over a decade. Yeah, was, yeah. Maybe yeah. he just felt he was ready for something completely different. But I, I, as a player, you would take him every day of the week. Have you met him? Yeah. What would mm. you make of him? I can't, I can't get my head I, around him. I, because I watch him in the media and it doesn't seem like he can hold a sentence together. And I listen to him and he's gotten cross and got really with Jim about a couple of things that apparently I've said and got all nasty about it, which goes with the territory, I guess, and people should perhaps get thicker skins. But, but what kind of fellow is he? I've, I've been in his company. Brian Robson made a movie three, four years ago and I went up to Manchester and I was in the company of other Man United players and he was there with his wife. He was charming, she was charming. That's mm. what I can tell you. I don't speak as you find right? I don't profess to know him, but liked him. And you know, humble, quietly spoken, and his wife was absolutely delightful as well. So that's it. I don't that's profess to know him. Yeah. yeah. What did you think about I mean obviously he's been sacked recently at Birmingham and I thought I did think it was a ludicrous appointment. Graham, I don't know what you thought. I don't see. I mean, if you were if you were a manager of Birmingham, right? Not that you'd be the manager of Birmingham, but if you were the manager of Birmingham, and you were your team was in the top six in the championship and it was all right, and someone comes along that's got a twenty seven percent win records everywhere they've gone, and most recently in the MLS, which is not the oh. most competitive of leagues, you'd not be too impressed with it, would you? No, I think the choice of going to Birmingham, Birmingham, and you know, you know, you've been in football. Birmingham yeah. has the potential to be a biggish club in the second city. You say that forever, don't you? Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Ever since I've been in football, but you know, it's not a biggish club with a you know, in Birmingham, big population, lots of chimney pots. So the potential to be a lot bigger than they are, let's say. Um, and they've been going well by their standards in recent history. And then you sack that manager. The new man coming in, whether it was Wayne Rooney or anywhere else, has to do well. And it didn't happen for him. Now, why he got the job, I think this is how we, and I wrote this in my Daily Mail column, I believe Wayne has an enormous following on social media platforms. Mm. And Americans see that as attractive to promoting Birmingham City. So they went for Wayne. Um, Wayne had to hit the ground running and it didn't happen for him. I think there's a case to suggest that there could have been more, that they could have won more. And I think given... I mean, it's, it's ridiculous to suggest because Liverpool haven't won a Premier League for 30 years. I think they defended their Premier League poorly in the season where mm. I thought they were brilliant in winning that Premier League. And the, the season they came back and they defended it poorly. Um, and when I, when I look at the roll call, because we've got this embarrassment of riches that is constantly reminded of what Guardiola is doing, and you make the point, and it's a valid point, that uh, they, he, doesn't, he hasn't had the same dough. But it's more to do with the sort of the over sentimentalization of the media going, look at Klopp, he's a legend. And I go, well, hey, yeah, Pep won four trophies in English football. But Pep walked into a team that had won the league under Pellegrini and Mancini. Yeah, granted. He was walking into a very healthy granted. football club. And, 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 and Klopp had three years to get himself together and has gone on and, and won. And spent a fraction of the money. Yeah, no, I understand all right, that. All right, I, mean, well, I believe they had the opportunity to go to United. Do you? Well, I think his wife um, was quoted recently <coughs> saying that she didn't think it was right at the time. If he had gone to United, do you think it, he would have transformed them the same way? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, look, he, he got three years at Liverpool. And whichever way you cut it, he did get three years before he won anything. Yeah. He got three finals. If that had been Man United... I think it would have survived. Got, yeah, I think it would have survived. You reckon? Yeah, I think, you know, he, he um, manages the crowd really well. You know, he gets the crowd with him very quickly. But you know the Liverpool he's, crowd, and Liverpool crowd and Man United crowd are not cut from the same cloth, are they? I think that in terms of winning football matches, because that's, that's ultimately what they want to see. 
But yeah, well, Jurgen has been the perfect fit for Liverpool. Mm. Abrasive, passionate, you know, intense, charismatic, yeah, yeah. leader. He's, and I think I think that would have worked at Man United as well. Yeah, I don't know. I think the problem with Man well, United, would, would, he would have had a lot more money to spend at United. Sure, sure. Would um, he would he have had Michael Edwards at a Michael Edwards at Man United? He, he, there's a few. You know, the stars align for yeah, him I would, I would, to be successful. Look, I'm not suggesting that he wouldn't have been successful at Man United because I happen to believe that, in my view, I think he's the best manager around. Um, so it flies in the face. Better than Pep? I, I do for different reasons because I think he has to work with a different, as, we've, as you've mentioned, different level of resource. And the brand of football that Jurgen wants to play is more interesting for me on an individual level. And me. And I, you'd expect yeah. me to say as a Liverpool supporter, but, you know, I, 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 yeah, I prefer watching Liverpool at their best to City at their best. Jack Grealish. Mm -hmm. There's a perception for me that he irritates you. Um, yeah, I think to a point. I think um, the way I was educated in my footballing life was... Take as few touches as you possibly can. Yeah. Because the only people that really matter are the guy. The only people that need time and space are the guys in the box who want to score the goals. And if someone runs with the ball before he's picking a pass, that's telling you he's not really playing the game in his head before the ball arrives at him. And and that's how I see Jack Grealish. I'd like him to pick a pass quicker. I think buying a foul, I think, is a term today. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd call it something else, but it seems there's been a lot of sand on his, his backside. Uh, I'm, I am, no, I can't say I'm his biggest fan, no. Um, do you think he's improved a lot? No. Uh, not, not, what, not even under Pep? No. Not at all? I don't because that's that. Pep's stock in trade, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's, a, that's what I, everyone thinks is Pep Guardiola gets good players and he just makes them better and they come round to his way of thinking and... And I don't see any changes. Do you not see? I come, in like, fact, I think I think his stats may be worse at sitting where. What you mean go, in, in in offensive positions? Yes. But as a player, I think he's I become think, more responsible. Yeah, maybe in terms of you know dropping back, um, more enthusiasm to do the hard yards. That's the yards going back towards your own yeah, goal. Yeah, when I've seen but, that last but, year. You know, you're not buying you're not buying that type of player uh, because he he defends really well for you. I mean, the, the priority for someone like that when you spend over. a I think says 100 million, million quid. quid. He's going to be the difference in the big games. He's going to be scoring lots of goals. He's going to be creating lots of goals. None of that's happened. Yeah, he's won some big trophies, but I would argue he's in a very, very good team. Yeah. Well, he's going to have to but he, had, he has, he has become more, more defensively yeah. aware. Works harder. Tracks back. Gets involved. Yeah, but I would also yeah. suggest that I think it's all on for him now. He's mm. got that Oscar Bob, who looks to be a fabulous player. And Doko. Mm. Um, yeah, so I like him as well. You know, so he's got some competition to be a starter in that team now. It is your irritation? Cause I, I, do you come from a position where I frame it as irritation? You can frame it how you want. But is it? Does it come from a position of expecting more from them? Yeah. Or is it because you get irritated that they're given the amount of attention that they're given and not worthy? Well, I think I think it's maybe born out. Of, is it Aston Villa? Not a great Aston Villa team. So he's on most of the ball. He's the one that's creating. He's the one that's scoring. He was a go-to man in many ways. So you then you get your big move to the top team. Uh, and I, I, I don't really see him having improved much, if any at all. His numbers wouldn't suggest that. I think I'm right in saying. Do you think he... Do you think he, um, he flatters to deceive. Yeah, I thought that as well. I've never, I've never got it. And it's not for me to get, but it's, I don't have an opinion on it. And then I'll talk to people like you and other people that He's work with players. I've always thought that he's never been what people have led me to believe he is. You know, I grew up watching players that could go past players, whether it was Stevie Coppel or whether, mm. whether it was Lloyd Cunningham, whether it was Peter Barnes, or watching people like George Wilfred Fred, Saar. or even my boy, Wilfred Zaha at Palace. And, but that's not a fair comparison because Wilfred Zaha's at a certain level and Jack Grealish is playing for arguably the best team in English football. And right. Wilfred Saar could have played for Man. Oh, I, I think so. I, I think so. We're getting slightly off. The matter. I said on Sky five years ago, Real Madrid should buy Wilfred Zaha. I said what I said. Exactly what I said. Do you think it for me? Oh, possibly. Yeah. Because, because if there was one player you didn't want to be one on one with inside your box or even in your half, it was Wilfred Zaha. I'd have a I fight said, with you. He'd be aggressive to you. 
He's lightning quick and he's brave. Anyway, we're getting off getting off Jack. I I am. Um, no, I haven't. I don't think I've seen any improvement in him. Was it tough for you to leave Sky? Going on to Sky. Well, I mean, I'd been 23 years at Sky. Uh, I don't know if you remember, one of the first live games I did, uh, the first year I was there, it was a Rangers Celtic Scottish Cup final. Mm -hmm. And having helped me out my career all the way along, you proceeded to help me out then as well, in the late 80s, and I beg your pardon, in the late 90s. Um, Rod Wallace scored the only goal of the game, mm -hmm. Rangers won it, and you were a studio guest with me. Mm -hmm. And that was a fantastic occasion as well. And I, I remember asking you, did you want to come up and be in the studio? And that was great. And that sent me off covering live football. I was very lucky, Graham. I, I, I went after things. I, I pursued things at Sky. I, I had that mentality that I had when I asked you if I could come to Italy hmm. and do a half-hour documentary. Brass neck, I think it's called. Brass neck. Brass neck is exactly what it is. Hmm. And... Um, you know, you helped me along the way as well. Even when you were at Sky, we would always bump into each other. But after 23 years, after many successful years there, transfer deadline day, wearing the yellow tie and everything that went with it, it was a great old time. Mm. And, uh, you know, you move on. Do you miss it? Not particularly, no. Uh, I miss no some, part of it? Not really. I miss some of the people that mm. I worked with. Um, but the memories are so good that I hold on to them. Uh, I don't really miss it. Highlight? Oh, many highlights. Um, oh, what was the biggest transfer story you broke? Um, there were there were many stories in there, and I, I was very fortunate to be on some very special nights. One of the biggest ones when it was confirmed that Mesut Ozil was going to Arsenal. I mean, that that, that was a From huge Real night. Madrid. Yeah, I mean that 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 was a massive story when Berbatov went to Manchester United, and at the same time, Rubinho looked like going to Chelsea. But he ended up at Manchester City when Fernando Torres went from Liverpool to Chelsea mm. and Abramovich got what his What is the biggest story you've brought in your career? <laughs> You're going to love this. The biggest story I, I have broken was you going to Rangers. Mm. Of that, there's no doubt. That's because you were young. I was young. You were at the absolute mm. top of your game. You were a major, major name in football. Top, top player. Mm -hmm. You captained Liverpool to European Cup final glory three times and you'd been to Italy. And that was the biggest story. And what happened after that stood me in fine stead as well. Mm -hmm. you, what you did at Rangers after that because you very kindly let me follow you in your first season at Rangers. And you went on in your first season to lift the league title. Mm -hmm. And that's why you were there. So that was probably the, uh, one of the, if not the biggest, the, one of the biggest stories that I was ever behind covering in it. I was always very, very grateful to you. You must look at me and you think, oh, Christ, not him again. I can't get rid of him. <laughs> but, and here we are at Talk Sport. We do a show with, with uh, the man Jordan, which is great. So after Sky, Talk Sport has been great. Mm -hmm. There was a time that it overlapped and that was too much for me, Graham. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hit kidney problems with that. And I, I became ill trying to do the two jobs. And only one job where I was able to do and I went on to do talk sport and mm. still do it with you. But I loved it. I don't miss Sky now. We, though, can, not, we can't really. escape each other, that's all. We can't escape each other. Do you miss Sky? A wee bit of me misses it. You know, sitting there. Talk, I wasn't like sitting in front of a camera. I was like talking football. I like to talk football. Yeah. You know, and obviously it makes good television if we don't all agree. And I, I you know, okay, occasionally I'd be mischief. I'm mysterious, but um, I, I miss the talking of football. What I don't miss is travelling up and down the country. Travelling to you is super difficult, whether it's by train, aeroplane, cars. Yeah, yeah. Going to so games. I don't miss that. And then sometimes, yeah, if we're in Liverpool or Manchester or Newcastle, I mean, sort of travelling up on a Saturday for a Super Sunday game, staying in a you know a hotel, and you're on your own. You think that my I should be home with my young wife and enjoying a dinner somewhere but but, but I'm like you you know the, the, I don't dwell on things no yeah I, I don't dwell I can park stuff Sky were great to me simply because when I got sacked at Newcastle I thought that's me done with management it just isn't for me anymore and my wife encouraged me to get involved at Sky 
And I said, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I've been doing a wee bit, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure. So I tried and I started to enjoy it. So I did that, I mean, with the overlap between being a manager and Sky. I must have, it's worked out like this for me. Played 20 years with an overlap into management. Did management for 20 years with overlap on both sides and, and Sky for the best part of 20 years. So how lucky really? am I? Because I, I played, I played with great, and now I'm doing this stuff only for 20 years. But that's, um, that's another story. I, um, I look at some of the players I played with, great players who at the age of 33, as players did then, 34 finished, yeah, and there were another shilling out of football, and that was done for them. Football was You're finished, still going. and I'm still going. And and I, and I, I love watching football. I love talking about football, um, and you know, I like to think you get to a certain age, you've got a certain amount of experience um, that maybe some people will listen to my opinion, I, 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 and I accept not everyone will agree. But I'm not just blowing smoke up your bum. You realise how popular you are. You've got a hell of a lot of respect for the, the way you spoke at Sky, for the way you read a game, for the way you played when you, when you were a player. But thereafter, on your, Sky, on your Sky duties, you knew that if you get in a taxi in London or Liverpool, people would compliment you. You weren't afraid to say what you mean and mean what you said. Yeah, but it's impossible... It's impossible to be popular with everyone because if you're doing a game as a winner or as a loser, if the, the losing team have been doing something very obviously wrong or some players have not been very good, you, I, I would tell, I would say that. I would say, well, I didn't think he was at it today or I think he should, should have done better here. So you're criticising someone in a, a 90 minutes. And of course, that doesn't mean you're very popular in certain areas. But I... I, I, I Worked out very early, very early on in my football career when I was a player, I, I, and I made a conscious decision: I'm not in this to be popular. It's not a popularity contest. That's good. And if I upset people by the way I play, so be it. And now I'm in management, no doubt upset people. And then if now I'm media person. Um, if I'm if I'm upsetting people, then I'm prepared mm. to take that on the chin because it's only my opinion. Roy Keane's outlook the same, is it? When he's on jelly, he... I think we're quite similar, yeah. Yeah, quite similar. You got your favourites there, as in who you were on with. Yeah, I liked. I liked. Um, I, I think when, I like working with Roy, Jimmy, um, Jimmy Carragher, and 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 um, <laughs> what's his name? Man, yeah, my United player, <laughs> the Mayor of Is Manchester, it, yeah. Simon Golden, <laughs> Gary, Neville. Gary Neville. He was like the gift it kept giving. <laughs> you picked your moments with him, though, didn't you? On the famous well, day that Liverpool battered them, what was well, seven? I didn't pick my, I didn't pick my moment. I stated before the game, I thought they're going to Liverpool will win and win well today. And both him and Roy had a chuckle at me. And this was off camera. And then when we went on camera, Gary challenged me to repeat what I said, and I said it. And then I didn't expect seven. I, I thought it was going to be a two or three. Um, and then afterwards... We're back in the studio and we're on air and I challenged Gary to repeat what he had said off camera because he had said off camera and Liverpool didn't even play well today. So when we went, <laughs> when we went, I said, come on then, you challenged me before the game. I said what I said off camera. What did you say off camera? And he wouldn't say it. <laughs> and I, I had to say, well, I'll tell you what he said. He must have had a short-term memory loss. And um, it was a great day for me. It couldn't have gone any better. Yeah, I think that was my second last game. What, what do you think was the biggest game that you you ever were part of at Sky? The most memorable game? I mean, too many to mention. Well, we but... did we did Champions League games, didn't yeah. we? I mean, that, I mean, drama. I, was it Man City QPR? Oh, Aguero. Yeah. Sensational. You know, Martin, you know, Aguero. Yeah, that, that was like the last minute of the last game to win the league. It was just mm. unbelievable drama. Mm.